He's here. Andy Rice, the branding and advertising expert. Brands like a refresh. They do like to keep things edgy as well. So why is Andy Rice talking about things staying the same, I wonder? The Money Show. Does it work? Are you saying that nobody should ever come up with a new idea? No, not for one moment, Bruce, but... Uh, no, not for one moment, Bruce, he said, before his microphone was switched on. I don't, don't want you to have a disadvantage, Andy. OK. No, I'm not advocating change for the sake of change. Far from it. And in fact, many of the great case studies uh, demonstrate consistency. And most of the textbooks on marketing and branding and communications will say um, that consistency and continuity in ideas, in strategy and in execution should be uh, should be adhered to. Consistency and that, in, in strategy and good ideas and things that work. So that you end up, um, again, to use the marketing jargon, occupying a piece of the real estate in your consumer's brain. Now, if I said to you, if I described you as a castle sort of guy. Um, a I used bit, to be a castle sort of guy. A little bit Apple, um, sometimes a bit Nando's, but ultimately very Volvo. And I asked you to then put those th- th- that sentence into into language that didn't use brand names. In fact, if I asked Komatsu or anyone else to do that, I guarantee they would all say no, broadly, no, whoa, 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 stop, stop, me. stop me. Run me through those again. Let's just okay. uh, do a case study. Okay, here. so you're a castle sort of guy. Yes. You're quite Apple. Yes. Um, but And often, indeed, a bit Nando's, uh-huh. but ultimately very Volvo. Ah. So I think you would say something along the lines of um, that you're a gregarious sort of chap, one of the boys coming together with a castle, um, that you're quite uh, uh, innovative and disruptive. You think different, which is Apple. Mm-hmm. Um, and even to the point that at times you can be quite irreverent, ah. Nando's. And, but ultimately, when all is said and done, you are a Volvo qu- slash safe pair of hands. How do you know me so well? <laughs> so what has happened there is that those brands have, through consistency, said Castle will stand for friendship. Uh, Apple will stand for disruptive uh, zigging when the rest are zagging. Nando's will always be irreverent in its tone, and Volvo will focus on safety. And those have, uh, have worked and to the extent that, as I say, I think you can substitute regular language for brand names. And that is what many marketers want to do. They want to be known for something as single-minded as that. And you don't build that overnight. And therein lies the reason why people say, you've got to stick at it. You've got to be like like De Beers, you know, Diamond is Forever. That was launched in 1940. 47. 47. Yeah. Um, or Absolute Vodka, those, that, that campaign that just used the iconic shape of the bottle and had two words in the headline, Absolute Something, which was then visually depicted in the- in, Absolute. In, Serenity, yes. absolute whatever. joy, whatever yes. it was. Yeah. Whatever it might be. And that started in 1981 and was uh, still running up until 2013. So what is that, 22 years until they eventually moved away from that, that approach? So brands do that. And so it was because of that instinctive feeling that brands need to be consistent and, and demonstrate continuity that when I saw a, a headline uh, online today that said, happiness is overused in ads, says Coke's creative boss. And then the story goes on to say that the line open happiness, which they've been using since, I think, uh, 2009, something like that. They're changing it to open diabetes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Is that a lawyer I see at the door there? <laughs> Um, so they're moving away from open happiness because they say happiness itself as a construct, as a, as a, as a communication device, is overused. So, the, so lots of adverts, lots of companies, lots of brands lots of music, associ- yeah. associate themselves with happy. And so if you ha- want to be happy for the rest of your life, make a pretty woman, don't make a pretty woman your wife, blah, blah, blah. Pharrell Williams. With yeah, his, with his song happy. Called, yeah, yeah. So what they're saying is that what was a distinctive piece of, of, of communication territory has now become overused and uh, we need to move on. And to be honest, Coke has never been the most uh, patient of brands. They've, they've, over the years, they've, you, you could probably think of four or five straight away now and find you're perhaps surprised that there have been 15 or 16 uh, Coke payoff lines. And, and how does that then go to the consistency message? Well, the consistency therefore lies in the strategy behind the payoff line. So a payoff line is really an execution of a strategy. So um, let's take uh, another example. Um, We'll go, go back to Castle. Currently, the line is it all comes together with a castle. But there have been plenty of other lines for, with, around the Charles Glass Society, mm-hmm. the taste that stood the test of time, etc., all of which uh, address the same strategic intention, but perhaps the language moves on. Um, sometimes the, the language 
by its very nature, isn't going to last terribly long. Like we were discussing quite recently on the show Budweiser. Yeah. And how did we go? We went, what's up? What's up? Mm. And that was an iconic piece of communication, which was trying to make the point that it's an irreverent, fun, But at a moment brand. in time, because you go, what's up? Today people go, oh, well, exactly. what so on that, earth are you on about? So that was a payoff line, perhaps with a built-in sell-by date, because yeah. it, it, it was too edgy to, to go into the mainstream and stay there. But others last a hell of a long time, and... and will keep on going so long as they are relevant and memorable because sometimes there's a difference between a memorable payoff line and a motivational one so we can all remember a certain line but it doesn't actually motivate us to go and try or buy the brand so in 30 seconds yeah okay not you andy oh you're not allowed to play this game okay sms me right now what is standard bank's payoff line right now Send it to me right now. 31702-31567. Because for the life of me, I can only remember one that's older. Um, but what is, the, what, is the, what is the Standard Bank payoff line right now? Um, just just for, for curiosity's sake. Andy Rice has just mouthed it at me. And I went, oh, yeah. But you know, sometimes there are great brand positionings. And do marketers sometimes overthink things? I and think they do. Over stress, they can do, and they can become more fickle than they need be. Um, they can abandon a brand name, uh, sorry, a payoff line um, too early. There was a the classic uh, global proposition for KitKat is have a break, have, have a, a Kit Kat. Kit. Enter a new marketing director sometime in the 90s who looks, looks at this and says, I need to make my mark here. And he promptly drops have a break, have a Kit Kat and introduces enjoy your break with Kit Kat. As dull yeah, and catchy. dreadful a line as you could possibly imagine. Happily, his career at uh, Nestle was not that long. It broke uh, up. <laughs> <laughs> off he went and back came uh, Have a Break, Have a Kit Kat. And um, there are other probably apocryphal stories of marketing directors who've heard a line so many times in the development of a campaign. They've seen it when it was first presented, all the various iterations through the production and the generation of the, of the actual work that he gets to think, this is getting boring now, it's time to change, even before it's first been flighted. So, you know, these stories abound. But generally speaking, I think that uh, there are certain great campaigns that last I, for decades. I've seen a revision, maybe it was two years ago, um, that was Cremora. It's not inside. It's on top. Top. <laughs> uh, and, and but but a twenty first century version of one of the earliest adverts on South African television in the nineteen seventies. And I was like, nah. It's just it's old milk powder. Um, but that was me. Um, somebody who was familiar with the old campaign. It went away, then came back. Yeah, well, humour is a, is a difficult thing to sustain over a period of time. And also in that particular one, which I suspect was moving from one market segment to another. Um, but it still got the message over that this was a, a dairy creamer with all the freshness that you would expect, but doesn't need to be kept in the fridge. Okay, most people have got moving forward. Okay. I'm really disappointed in you. Why do you let me down like this, people? Um, so it's working. Um, the moving forward the payoff line. Thank you uh, to Gertrude and to uh, Sebeko, Tulani Sebeko and to Nobu and so many others. Uh, but a bunch of you. I mean, I, I, look, I look through here and... Um, 12 to 15 percent are doing simpler better faster oh right um yes. which is the the iconic standard bank payoff line it was the one with which people associated with standard bank with very very strongly for a long period of time but it was the one that standard bank found it most difficult to live up to and that was therein lies the problem a really a really strong and seductive message will encourage people to try the brand sooner and if the brand does not live up to that message then it will disappoint them sooner and they will share that disappointment these days on social media with all their chums and what should have been a, a great chapter in the textbook of marketing becomes a big disappointment okay very good so uh, the question then is this this consistency and this message this um you know, reinvent re-engineer suggests that you've failed so stick to your knitting well sometimes you have to move on because the environment changes so let's take a brand like toyota which built in this country a, an extraordinarily strong brand on the basis of reliability 
everything keeps going right Toyota. And that was because when they first started marketing Toyotas in the, probably the late 60s, early 70s, reliability was not a given for many cars. I mean, really? if you, how many times do you see a car by the side of the road with the bonnet up? You hardly yeah. ever see that these days. And, and uh, as a result, a brand that could promise and deliver reliability got away with, or no, more, no, stronger than that, they, they flourished under the line, everything keeps going right Toyota. And but then when it got to the point where yeah. reliability became a, a, a standard, Standard. They had mm. to move on, and they chose innovation, as as exemplified by the Prius and by the hybrids, and they used the line "lead the way." So that was a change from a, a line you might say, "Gosh, how much have they invested in that line? Why are they moving away from it?" Answer: Because the market was moving away from it, not just the brand. Yeah, it's absolutely lovely. But then, of course, Toyota ran into trouble um, in the United States, in particular, brake yeah, issues yeah. and all those Can't sorts stop of. Now I'm driving uh, a Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> And people then still remembered everything keeps going right Toyota yep. at a time where the brand was going through absolute crisis. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's as with your um, Simpler, Better, Faster, yeah. demonstrating that these things, you can't switch them off just because you've decided as a marketing tactic that we will have a new line. And I'm quite sure that Coke's Open Happiness, the line that started this whole debate, will continue to be identified with Coke. Because will anybody remember it, seeing as they've had 16? They've had, they've had more, more lines than we've had rugby coaches since democracy. Well, yes. And who can remember all the rugby coaches? <laughs> but they have still kept, kept it going for quite some years. I mean, it's been around since, I can't remember, what did I say, 19, the 1990s? Yeah. Um, so uh, I think seven, eight, nine, ten years for a Coke line is quite a lot. And given the new channel opportunities that that exist and the amount they they put in music, they've put in uh, experiential stuff, they've put in almost political stuff. They really put a lot behind that open happiness line. Only for it now, they think to have become vanilla and generic. It's lost and, its fizz. Yeah, it's lost its fizz. Absolutely. So what is the new one? The new one is taste the feeling. Yeah, okay, we'll get used to that. Andy Rice, the branding and advertising expert.